what we're going to be looking at here is a retirement of a bond or a redemption of a bond and the bond is going to have issue costs involved here and also was issued at a discount here the bond so we're going to have some amortization costs that we're going to have to deal with for both the uh, issue costs here and the discount on this bond and for our example here corporation A issued three million dollars of a 10 percent bond here for and it was a 10-year bond here on 120 x1 at 97 or 97 percent here of the par value that is they would have received 97 percent here of the three million dollar uh, face value of the bond when they issued it here received it in cash here now interest is payable semi-annually on 11 and 71 legal and other costs incurred were fifty thousand dollars so that's what we're going to be looking at here for how we deal with that here on the redemption of this bond or a portion of these bonds here now corporation a uses the effective interest method here for amortization of any bond premium or discount and any deferred charges here and when we're talking about deferred charges it would be those uh, issue costs here and uh, again for the bond issue costs here those deferred charges now the bonds are callable at 101 or 100 percent here of the face amount of the bond and on 1 1 20 15 here, uh, five years later here, Corporation A called $2 million of the face amount of the bonds and retired them here. So there were $3 million outstanding, but they recalled $2 million worth of those bonds here. So first thing we have to do is we have to deal with this uh, amortization here for the uh, both the bond discount here and the bond issue cost. Now I'm not going to go through the amortization method here itself. I'm just going to point out what we have to take off uh, and how we have to determine here our unamortized amount of the bond because that is the uh, uh, two million dollars worth of the three million dollar bond uh, that was issued here we're going to have an amortization here uh, we have to deal with here when we re uh, uh, redeem these bonds at a two million dollars worth so just uh, what you would have done here with this effective interest rate method you'd have to amortize your bond discount uh, and we started out here with two million nine hundred and ten thousand dollars that was ninety seven percent here of the three million dollar par value of the bond here and we have to amortize it up to three million dollars so we're going from two million nine hundred ten thousand up to three million dollars here but for our redemption here, we get down to the 10th period here. That's on 1-1. Uh, these were semi-annual uh, payments here on these bonds here. So after five years, five times two would be the 10th period here. So on 1-1, 20X1, the bonds are called here. At least $2 million worth of the $3 million were called. So what we have to do is we have to determine the amortization up to the date here. So all I'm doing is just summing up the amortization here for, in this case, the bond discount that was amortized here and what I come up with here is thirty three thousand seven hundred and forty one dollars here at the and this would be on 1 1 2015 when that was two million dollars worth of bonds were redeemed here so total amount here on for our three million dollars worth of bonds we got thirty three thousand seven hundred and forty one dollars amortization here to date and then we know the total amount that we have to amortize was ninety thousand here that two million nine hundred ten thousand up to three million here and the difference here between what was amortized here to date uh, and the total amount here of 90000 is going to give us an unamortized amount here of $56,259. So through all these calculations, uh, just our adding and our summing here and a little bit of subtracting, we have determined what the amort unamortized amount was. And that's this, this 56259 is for the total three million dollars worth of bonds that are outstanding now let's just move up here and just over these look at these uh, bond issue costs here again we're amortizing it using the effective interest method here so what we would have done here in this case is we would have amortized it here from well we amortized the bond itself from two million nine hundred and ten thousand here up to three million but then the issue cost they start at uh, the there were fifty thousand dollars here so we subtract that from the big be uh, beginning amortization amount here of two million nine hundred and ten thousand dollars here that was the uh, bond, uh, what we received here at the bond at 97% of the $3 million. So we start out with $2,860,000 and then we have to amortize it up here to 
$2,910,000. So again, I'm not going to go through all the arithmetic here, but you just add up whatever uh, amortization you had. In this case, it was that discount here, uh, or um, our issue costs that were amortized. And we come up with a total amount here at the 10th period here, on which would be 1-1-2015, of $18,860. And remember, the total amount that we have to amortize was that $50,000 here. So uh, the difference here is going to give the unamortized amount here of $31,140. So that's what's remaining here uh, for what is unamortized, but that's for that total amount here of uh, $3 million worth of bonds that were issued. So let's go up here and now uh, look at how we'd make our calculations here uh, for recording, how we determine what the unamortized amount here of the bonds that we redeemed. Now, Remember, we're going to be looking at the unamortized discount and issue cost here as of 1-1-2015 when these bonds were redeemed here or five years after their original issue here. And remember, they were 10-year bonds. So what we've, re what we've reacquired here would be $2 million of reacquired here of the $3 million bond amount of bonds that were issued here at their face amount here. And what we're going to be looking at is 66% of the bonds were reacquired here. That was 2 million divided by 3 million here uh, gives us 66%. So first looking at our, we're divided up here between our discount on our bonds payable and our issue costs. What we have to determine was our unamortized amount. So for our discount on bond payable, remember here, we're sitting at $90,000. We amortized 33,741. So the difference gives us an unamortized amount here of $56,259. Now we remember, we retired 66% of the bonds here. So we're gonna look at 66% 66% of the unamortized amount here of 56,259 gives us an unamortized amount here of $37,468. That's for those $2 million worth of uh, bonds here that were redeemed. So that's going to be coming off our book here. Again, you see the 66 percent here that's just the two million that we redeemed divided by the three million that were in, in, initially issued here an initial issued issued worth of bonds here and these are the face amount of our bonds here now moving over to our issue costs here same thing fifty thousand dollars issue costs we amortized up to the um, date here that we redeemed the bond there was eighteen thousand eight hundred sixty dollars so the difference gives us an unamortized amount here on that uh, total three million dollars worth of bonds that were issued here of 31,140. Now remember, we're retiring 66% of them here. So 66% times that, you get an unamortized amount here of $20,739 here. That's for the $2 million worth of bonds that we're retiring here. Again, you see the arithmetic here. So now, uh, what we have to do is we have to figure out any gain or loss on this redemption moving down here. So our reacquisition price, remember that was $2 million here times the, uh, they were callable here at 101% in our uh, problem here. So 2 million times 101%. Our reacquisition price, this is what we're gonna have to pay in cash for them here is 2 million, $20,000, 101% times the $2 million worth of face value bonds that were redeemed here. Now, now we have to determine uh, that we have to uh, determine a net carrying value here of the bonds that were redeemed here. So the par value, remember that was $2 million of face value or two thirds of the bonds that were issued were redeemed here. Now the unamortized discount, remember we calculated that above here uh, for the discount on our bonds payable here of $37,468 and then unamortized issue cost here was $20,739. So we, cal we calculated that above here. So our net carrying value of the bonds redeemed, we just uh, 2 million less the unamortized disc in here, less the unamortized issue cost here gives us uh, net carrying value of the bonds here, $1,941,739. Now, just compare that to the acquisition price. We actually had to pay 2 million $20,000 here for these uh, bonds that were uh, being redeemed, the 2 million face value of bonds that were redeemed here. And then the carrying value here, the bonds was 1,941,739. So we paid more 
than the carrying value. So what we would have here, just subtracting it or comparing them here, we're going to have a loss on the redemption here of $78,207. So we lost. We had to pay more out here and our carrying value was less. So we're going to come up with this loss on the redemption here. Now remember, that's for the 66% of the bonds that we repurchased here or we redeemed here. Okay, so now let's go look at our journal entries here. So we're going to have our asset side here, looking at our asset accounts here, and then our liability accounts here, and then we got an income statement account here. So first off, let's just go look at the redemption. We're, everything is just looking at the redemption date here, just uh, setting every interest expense and issue cost expense. Setting those aside, we're just going to look at the redemption itself here. So what we would do here, let's just look at um, our bonds payable. Remember, that was sitting here at $3 million. That was 1-1-2010 here. Now, five years later on 1-1-2015 here, we're going to redeem uh, two million dollars worth or the par value of those bonds at two million dollars worth of them or in this case it was 66 percent so two million dollars worth of par value we debit that here on our bonds payable on our balance sheet and that would be our debiting entry here to remove off the two million dollars or par value of those bonds retired here okay and then cash, cash that we had to pay out, and this is the reacquisition price here. That's what defined here as our reacquisition price here. Again, on 1120x15 here, it was $2,020,000. And that was the $2 million face value times that 101% that they were callable at here, that 101 that what they were call about, callable here. So the next thing we have to deal with is these uh, our amortizations here for our bond issue cost here and our on our discount our bonds payable. Now remember this bonds issue cost. This was a long term asset here on our asset side of the uh, balance sheet here. So rem when we first issued them here uh, on one one twenty ten here, our uh, our issue cost here was fifty thousand dollars. Now we come back here. Um, when we redeem these uh, bonds here to $2 million worth of bonds that were retired here, the unamortized issue cost here was $20,730. That we calculated, $39, excuse me, $20,730 20, here. That's what we calculated above here. So we'd credit our bond issue cost, that was that deferred charge here, reduce it by $20,739 here. And then moving over to our liability aside, now since these bonds were issued at a discount, uh, that would have been a contra account here to our bonds payable. So we would have debited that here for uh, ninety thousand dollars here and that was at the issue date here 1120x1 and then comes along here uh, five years later when we redeemed these bonds here in 112015 we would have credited that uh, discount here to our bonds payable and that was the unamortized amount here of the discount on this two million dollars worth of retired here that's what we calculated above here that 66 percent of the total am unamortized discount here so what we would and just to make a note here, these bond issue costs here, uh, you can see this is a long-term asset, and you can see where the debits and credits line up here. Uh, asset accounts here, and this discount here was a contra account to our account, accounts payable here, only because the bond was issued at a discount here. And then moving over to our income statement here, uh, this is where we recognize that loss here on the bond redemption here. We would debit that here for $78,207. That was the redemption loss. So if you look at all your debits and credits here, everything's going to lie. Uh, 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 it's going to balance out here. Your debits are going to uh, balance with your credits here. And you can see we this is this loss here on our bond redemption that we had to make that calculation up above here for the redemption loss here. So this is how you would handle um, when you're redeeming bonds here. And we looked at it in the case of a discount here, and we also went through the complexity here when you're using the effective interest method. So just remember here, you have to determine uh, whatever uh, amortization you're using, straight line or the effective interest method, you have to determine the amount that you've amortized up to date here, and then you have to re re determine the remaining amount that uh, has to be amortized here and then you have to uh, look at the percent if if 
100% of the bonds were recalled uh, in this, let's just say for example here, 100% of the bonds here were recalled here, then you would just be using 100% of, in this case we had the 90,000 here, when we, on our discount that was originally a, a discount here on the original issue, but if 100% of the bonds were recalled here in 2015, then we'd be using whatever the total amount of the unamortized discount here for the total amount of the bonds that was sitting here. Now you can see for our example here, we had only um, a, um, repurchased or redeemed uh, 2 million of the three million dollar face amount here so we had to calculate that portion here uh, that we had to take off the books here for our discount on our bonds payable and also our bond issue cost here in our bonds payable and we can only take that off for the amount of the uh, bonds that were retired here all right so that takes care of it a little going through a lot of numbers here but I uh, you can follow through them here and you should be able to handle here a uh, retirement of a bond here where you've got these bond issue costs here and also we looked at it where we also have a discount here that we had to handle here for amortization purposes